it's a super cool idea uh, because I think we need some change in the format we communicate. And since we have a, a major change in our lives, uh, why not experimenting also with um, other formats to communicate, right? Yes. So I think it's an awesome idea. And I loved the trailer, really. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, very was, good. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. Really. I, yes. I don't procrastinate with all those, but the baking part was was the best one. <laughs> I had I had a long first of all, I mean the I had to, you know, like I I had a, such a long list of ideas for procrastinating that you would not believe it. Like um Yeah, okay. There's a, there's a lot of stuff that I, I could do to procrastinate. And and then the baking, I wanted to get it right. And, mm-hmm. and I wanted to not have the thing be too long because, you know, like a trailer for a podcast, there's a limit mm-hmm. to people's uh, how patient they can be. Yeah. Um, but I had, you know, I had the, every step I had, I, <laughs> I think I filmed, <laughs> I think I filmed, you know, like 10 minutes of, you know, get, they have the water and the, the, yeah. dough and the sourdough and the adding. And I was like, yeah. no, yeah. probably, probably I only need uh, three seconds, yeah, but, but I'm glad. But- this is how it is usually, right? Yeah. That you film right. a lot and then condense in, yeah, one percent uh, of the time. <laughs> yeah. But it's funny because a lot, like, p- there's a lot of details in there, and different mm-hmm. people picked up on different things. Like some people are like, "Oh, you're reading the Einstein paper," and other people were like, "Oh, eat, pray, love." Uh, you know, like, um, so so it mm-hmm. was funny to mm-hmm. see that um, different different uh, uh, favorite uh, ones, yeah. Oh. Of course, of course, it, it's the one that you resonate, that we resonate yeah. most with, right? I, I did notice the Einstein too, but uh, I mean, yeah, but I mean, the baking was more interesting. <laughs> and the KitchenAid, yes. the red KitchenAid. Yes, but let's talk about you. <laughs> let's get, let's get yeah. started on yeah. the podcast. So, so yeah. um, the way I want to start this is that mm-hmm. uh, you're known, of course, as uh, completely... Uh, being a superstar in doing work on the science of science. You've done an amazing mm-hmm. number of papers on this. But mm-hmm. what I did was I went on Google Scholar and mm-hmm. I um, ordered the papers chronologically. And then I scrolled yeah. all the way to the bottom and I see that yeah. it has not been science of science all the way. There's stuff yeah. on communities and brain networks and there's uh, mm-hmm. ultimatum games on networks and there's all kinds of stuff. So maybe start yeah. by explaining a little bit about how did you get into this racket what, what was your uh, story what is my story so um you know or yeah I'm, I'm a physicist by background right and uh, and i loved studying physics but i think when i was um yeah during my master degree and i chose the theoretical physics i thought okay this is this is cool stuff but i really want to get closer to to data to um, um to things i can touch somehow with my hands and yes. the 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 program that i was attending offered that is uh, courses in complex networks in complex systems dynamical systems and i thought oh this, this is cool stuff so i want to work in this and at the time i wanted to i thought that um, um you know the next big thing would be to combine physics with biology so I wanted to work on networks and things that have some um, connections with with bio very loosely defined yep. so and this is our, our, uh, the reason why I started working on uh, brain networks and uh, networks applied to the proteome so actually my very first project was still a master student was um, trying to convert somehow the information they have in, uh, in proteins in, in the whole proteome into yep. a network yes. um, and it was cool stuff I loved it and it happened uh, somehow this you know was what I could do in the uni- my university at the time uh, I was uh, I had this uh, wonderful mentor with that yes. uh, it, uh, it started working on networks recently we're talking about 2005 2006 something like that and yeah and I started, <laughs> um, and then I shifted. Uh, so um, I did my PhD in Catania, and during my PhD, I said, "Okay, bio brain is uh, cool stuff, but I also like social networks, the the 
uh, yeah, applying yes. these tools to society. And I started working with people in Vienna with Michael Sell. Uh, he mm -hmm. had this uh, part of game, so a multiplayer online uh, yes. game that back then, you know, was a treasure trove of data. Uh, well, yeah. Now we are a bit more spoiled. We were used to have this huge data sets, very complete and so on. But back then, I mean, the Copenhagen, Copenhagen Network Study is one of them, but uh, 2008, 2008, it was not. No, uh, but I, <laughs> I remember the times. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yes. <laughs> this I'm, is I'm recording the podcast. No, but it's... <laughs> <laughs> this is the beautiful part of it. Let's yes, keep it. yes, yes. <laughs> it's the Corona, the Corona. Uh, and, but but um, they were. <laughs> yes, getting back, getting back on on track. Um, so the multiplayer yeah so, 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 so you had this amazing data and, and i was just going to chime in that i i remember that i wrote my master's thesis on the spires data set which is a data set of papers in high energy physics which was the first database ever built but it's mm -hmm. like the s inspires is from stanford because there's these stanford computer scientists yeah. and back then you know like it was kind of you have a data set that's amazing and yeah, now we're yeah. kind of in this thing where you're like, oh, there's too much data and it's noisy. Yeah. And it's so, so a lot has changed. And But I think that that data set you explored with Michael, and by the way, a lovely paper, mm -hmm. is still interesting because it is a whole universe, right? Yeah, and it's self-contained, right? Yes. Everything that happens to a player in the in the data set, you can, um, you can know, right? It's, it's yes. tracked. Um, so, so I, I thought, oh, this is cool, and I want to move a bit more into society. And and, and I think this was uh, the need that I always felt, you know, to to apply methods that can be very abstract to things that we can experience daily. Yes. So combining somehow these two extremes. Yeah. And, and it's definitely easier to, uh, at least for me, to apply whatever statistical method or network theory to humans than to proteins. It's it's harder to know how uh, proteins feel, yeah. right? Why, why, um, with all the problems that, that keep this can bring. Um, and I think this happened at the end of my PhD and then it was time to move to a postdoc. Oh, I wanted to continue research. I had no doubts about this. And um, I got this uh, James McDonald Fellowship that allowed me to go um, on almost wherever I wanted. Um, yep. Because I, 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 the fellowship was uh, funding um, my studies, and uh, I went to um, I went to Boston, right? I, mm -hmm. to, uh, yes. I think th this is also where our uh, paths uh, crossed yes. somehow. <laughs> and and there there was this uh, they were doing uh, many projects, many amazing projects. But the one that caught my attention was the one about success. How do we think yes. about success? And also this term today, I think we we know and understand much more. It's um, more obvious in a way what we're talking about but uh, back then um, it was still a blurred concept and it which offered a lot of possibilities to shape it right and yes. to create projects and so on so I decided to jump into that and this is where the science of science yeah. started and but I think it's so interesting because that is also in a way what's so beautiful about it is that when you look at at least the citations it is really also a closed universe. Academia is a closed universe. And we have this kind of internet of where, you know, uh, where, where we uh, attribute, um, uh, you know, where we get information from. There's a fixed set of rules as, as we explored, you and I, in a, in a paper, the, even the ordership of ordering of the authorship, ordership. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. you know, so, 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 um, so, so it's also a nice contained, uh, universe. And I think that's in a way, super interesting, uh, as well, yeah. but, but and actually, said, so, yeah, no, go ahead. No, I just, I just yeah. wanted to complete this 
this thought that yeah. um, that uh, originally we we're not thinking to study science just because it's science. We're thinking about success and now we, we study about success. And then we said, okay, let's start with science exactly for the reasons that you said that data yeah. is so uh, clean. It's a um, self-contained, uh, if you want, yeah. universe. Um, uh, so uh, we didn't start with science and say, let's study success, but the other way around, let's study success. Yes. Oh, where is the good data source? It's um, yeah, science. Yeah. And it's the system that... We understand best yes, because we are part absolutely. of it, which is also problematic because then we have a lot of opinions that. But, it, uh, but I mean, in we, terms oh. of getting people to read, <laughs> in terms of getting people to read the papers, it's a, it's very important because people love yeah. to read about themselves. So it can be. But the thing I wanted to come back to is that you said something that I thought was super interesting, which is you said, when you were done with your PhD, you said I had no doubt that I wanted to continue in science. And so before yeah. we start talking about papers, I want to yeah. dig in more and ask about you. So how did you know? Why did you know? What is it in you that made sure you had no doubt? Yeah. Ah, it's, you know, uh, it's hard to say now, now that I'm, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a biased view again, a bit like survivor bias. Kind of yes, view. Of course. Um, I think so. Part of the fact that I wanted to continue research is that um, I had a wonderful PhD journey. Um, I mean, very, very rewarding. You know, some, uh, you know, sometimes PhD students or students, general, also postdocs get into this cloud, right? The cloud that Yuri Allen, for example, talks yes. about, that you want to go from A to B and then you're lost in the cloud for a lot of time, you lose motivation and so on. And then when you get out of the cloud, yeah. it's, um, it's a relief. I had cloud moments, but there were not so many. And, uh, you know, everything seemed to me that went very smooth and I had a lot of fun. Uh, I loved the social part of um, social, social component of research. During my PhD, I, I traveled to many places. I was at Beef in Zaragoza. I was, um, so with Yamir Moreno and Jesus they were part of the early projects on game theory on networks. I didn't mention that part. <laughs> No. Or I was I was in Vienna where I worked with, with Michael and Michelle Bruna. I was in London uh, working on more information here. So I, I had I, I loved the fact that we, I could meet a lot of people and do science, right? Discovering mm -hmm. something new. And um, and also that part of doing science went well because at the end of my PhD I had already a few publications, some also landed um, well. So so I thought this is this is perfect, right? So you, you do what you like, right? Doing science, it goes well, you meet people, you travel, uh, you can perhaps contribute to the world. Why uh yeah, giving up with that? Some people could say, okay, you can have uh, more stability with another job and perhaps more money for the same skill, right? The usual um dichotomy yes. between industry and, and, uh, and doing research but I think it, I never thought about that I, I, I thought this is, this is fine why are changing the winning team uh, so yes okay. so I, I, I said okay I want to I want yes. to continue and part of this was also the fact that I won that fellowship that I mentioned the McDonald's fellowship and um, that gave me some peace of mind because I um I could choose whatever project I wanted, whatever place I wanted for three years. Mm -hmm. So, so it was easier, an easier choice. To yeah. Make. No, yeah. but it's but I think I mean for all those reasons, right? I mean, I I I mean just for for my two senses, I agree a hundred percent. I think that you know the the conversations you have are the best conversations, and you get to have them while traveling the world, right? And the conversations yeah. are about ideas and moving ideas forward and and navigating this cloud mm -hmm. and discovering new landscapes. So so I, yeah. I'm with you. I, I yeah. totally and 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 also uh, perhaps the last tiny bit would be that it's a creative job. And yes. and, and, and 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 this was answering my uh, need for creativity, right? A hundred percent. 
Yeah, I, I agree so much. And I think that's something that maybe, I mean, this is a podcast for scientists. So, so probably I'm preaching to the choir, but I think that's the thing that non-scientists understand the least in a way that this is exactly creative. It's just mm -hmm. that you need to be creative inside this very meticulous, particular box with all these rules and formats and so on. But within this, there is still room for making things very different. And, mm -hmm. and, um, and you were good at it. So <laughs> because you converted that three year um, scholarship into kind of something quite amazing. Because when I met you in Laszlo Barabashi's lab, uh, the way that he ran things then and, and, and I'll, I'll disclose something. I actually have a podcast interview with Laszlo because I wanted to do a podcast years mm -hmm. ago where I, we only did this, where we just talked about the people because I think mm -hmm. that's it was like an excuse to ask, uh, you know, Laszlo questions about his childhood and, and stuff that <laughs> I was curious about. But, but mm -hmm. one of the things I also asked him was like, how do you even manage this? And mm -hmm. basically I was in his group, you know, in the kind of... 2007 to 2009, 10, and, and there it was a different format. But by the time you were there, you were kind of, he had kind of divided it up into the science of success and some other groups. And you were mm -hmm. kind of running, there was, there was like a new <laughs> uh, org level and you were mm -hmm. running a whole group. So, yeah. so you were already kind of really um, plugged in uh, at that time. Yeah, it was, well, I'll say it was kind of self organized it's not that one day Laszlo came to me and said now you run to success no no right um I, I always I, I consider myself a bit I, I can say like an extrovert social person so I was talking yeah. a lot with people um uh, about their project their success related projects so somehow I happened to be the bridge between different people and different kinds of knowledge and then when you do this kind of bridging work it, it, it you start taking decisions you start leading if you want to say leading and so on so somehow it, it happened and it, it worked well I remember that as a very prolific and uh, happy time also because yeah. of, uh, of the um, yeah so we were doing uh, cool science or oh, at least from my point of view it was cool um i loved it we were a team we were running things together we were doing also you know organizing conferences satellites and yeah. more journal clubs. so it was fun i really i think it was really fun and it turned out to be successful in the sense that we also had um good output that at the end is important right for our um uh, yes. and um so but that, that was right let's say um well it was also the goal but the whole journey was fun the whole journey was um absolutely and and i think at the same time so there was success group but there were also other groups um the ones working on the disease zone on the on the bio projects and so so um it was a, a well function um, lab um, with some hierarchy but also with a lot of cross um, pollination between the different areas and yeah I, no but I, I, I mean I loved it <laughs> yes no but I, I also I mean I also had a, an amazing time there and in Boston in general and and now we're both in Copenhagen we're still uh, yeah. safely COVID and away from each yeah. other but there is something magical about also this kind of flow of people through a big lab like that you'd kind of get get um, you know you 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 get to meet all kinds of cool people uh, mm -hmm. simply by just hanging going to work right and that's also yeah. like a really yeah. nice thing about that yeah. I think. and I, I find myself often trying you know not to replicate but I, I did I did absorb a lot from that time and almost unconsciously I tried you know, even if the conditions are different, the uh, working life is different here, try to replicate a bit of the Boston magic. In, uh, yes, and, and, I, and, yeah. I, and I mean, 
and, and I know you do too. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll t- now I'll like speak directly to the camera. We're doing it in Copenhagen. So many yes. people are coming here, and you should yeah. too. So yeah. sorry. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, no, just a bit of a shameless plug. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's it's yeah. uh, it's 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 uh, it's growing, and and at least for data science, probably not for all science. It it is. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. it's pretty amazing and it's cool to have you and Michael and the whole big group of awesome people out at uh, yeah. ITU. Yeah. yeah, and it's, so, it's growing, so it's happening. <laughs> but you know, uh, Roberta, that this podcast is called Too Lazy to Read the Paper and you yes. have written a paper and, and of course I've been incredibly lazy, uh, too lazy. <laughs> this, is my, this is the catchphrase part of the podcast. You see what I'm doing yeah. here? Yeah, yeah, definitely. professional uh, production <laughs> values. Um, I've been yeah. too lazy to read it, and I hope that you would uh, talk to me about it. And and I think it's nice because you know I guess the first way I would like you to get into it is not just explain to me the paper, but in a way, tell me about. And and this is an idea. That I'll just set it up a little bit, which is we write proposal after proposal, and I don't like to write grant proposals because. I feel that the best ideas or the good ideas, they come from other ideas that you're working with something and you are like, no, this thing is missing or this is weird or I wish I could also do this or something. So I feel that every paper that you write, that you, you know, at least at the level that you want to talk about it, it comes from somewhere. It comes from some idea. And mm-hmm. and this one, because it has luck in the title, even yeah. though I, I, maybe I looked at it a little bit, but um, even, <laughs> <laughs> even, even if I hadn't read it, I, I know that you, you worked on success, you worked on these mm-hmm. factors and you show that there are factors that belong to people and you show that mm-hmm. there's randomness, but this is luck in the title. So there must be some kind of deep connection to the previous work. So maybe yeah. we can start there and then get to the paper. Yeah, 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 definitely. But uh, I also intended to talk about the backstage. Cool. I, I, th- I think it's more interesting sometimes to lift the curtain on the backstage than, yes. you know, than just do the play yeah. by the book. Um, yeah, also, and, yeah. yeah, and it also makes it easier to understand somehow to me yeah. that I get mm-hmm. the motivation. You know, instead mm-hmm. of someone is like, yeah, we decided to study this weird thing. And you're like, what, what, what why? Yeah, and, yeah. But if you <laughs> understand the context, it's better, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And yeah, and I love this format. So communicate. Yeah. So for this paper, um, so the title, I, I say the title, right? The success yes, and laugh. Yeah. I mean, I will also put it in the show notes and, and so on. So people sure, can find sure. it. Uh, sure. but, but, um, but you should say the title. Yeah, sure. so, so the title is Success and Luck in Creative Careers was published in uh, APJ Data Science in 2020, so last year uh, as we speak. Yes. Um, so, but the, the origin of the idea was, um, it's older. Uh, I think I can uh, tr- could trace it back to 2013. Mm-hmm. And um, at that time, as, as we said, uh, we were starting working on success and uh, success in science. And I think the idea was to try to predict the number of citations of a scientist. This was a, what, what we wanted to do. And the way we were thinking about this is by having, you know, these deterministic models a uh, bit inspired by. Um, um, dynamical systems that given an equation, put uh, the parameters in inputs, then they spit out uh, a number as a function of time. This was what the idea. And in a very scientific way, when I had to start thinking about modeling citations for scientists, you what I started doing is going on Google Scholar and try to look at the profiles of people and say, oh, let's see the shape. Let's see if I can yeah. guess from the shape. Um, I actually had uh, some slides with, uh, with the shapes that I was looking at. Shall I, shall I, uh, shall yeah. I try to yeah. share? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And this should be super fast. Oops. Okay. And, I, and I want to say that I, I'm kind of, I want to maybe do a, also an audio version of this. So, so 
probably we can okay. we can put you know like we can put this the i mean let's just talk about it and, and do the video version but maybe we can you know put an easy link to to these slides somewhere or sure something. sure and i can also talk in a way that i describe the slides so it's not that you need to have the slides. Uh, no, 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 but it's, it's not, but I think it's it is um I, I, it's difficult to talk about science without <laughs> looking at yeah. uh, <laughs> graphs, right? Like when people ask me what I do, I always say, well, basically I plot stuff and look at it. <laughs> yes, that's, yeah. that's my that's, process. That's a very good description, very good minimal <laughs> description of what we do. So I had effectively this kind of plots for different people, right? And I was trying to extrapolate a shape of the number of submissions per year and, and see what kind of modeling we could do to predict these numbers all the time. So this was the very yes. certain point. But you know, you start going in Google Scholar, you can uh, stumble on the number of submissions with Jake Stanley, just to mention one yes. of the. <laughs> um, the pioneers, let's say, of complex systems and stay in the Boston area, right? And, yes. Um, but you also have examples like Albert Einstein, and you want to have a model that captures the statisticians of both. They are both scientists, right? They are both non-careers. Yep. But there is an intrinsic difference between these two. And in one case, the person is allowed, is producing papers. In the other case, in the case of Albert Einstein, statistician change over time but the person is not producing papers anymore so if you think about this, this i was like two... this guy's career has gone pretty great um when i saw uh this this kid einstein here uh... yeah, yeah they're, they're going pretty great citations are growing right yeah. but they are but um but if you want to predict the number of citations of these two people there your modeling framework has to take into account the fact that one person is still publishing and still, by still publishing, you mean that you have to predict the papers that is gonna publish and their impact. The other person has already finished publishing and you have to predict the impact of those already existing papers. Yes, totally. So, so, so um, and of course these are two extremes, right? But there is everything in between. You also have to predict people that are still Will stop publishing, you will have that long breaks and so on. So uh, this, this is it's obvious once we know it, right? So everything is obvious yeah. once, once we know it. But for me, it was like a moment that I, ha moment that I said, okay, wait, here we are talking. When we, when we look at these careers, when we want to predict sufficient, we, we want to actually, we are seeing at the convolution of many things, the convolution yeah. of citation and productivity and what we produce right yes and, and i can't when... i can't oh sorry but i can't help oh, make, i can't help also making a plotting thing which is um i guess i actually I, it's not even what we're seeing here i was going to say that cumulative distributions are also even terrible because when you plot stuff and look at it it's very difficult to look at cumulative uh, distributions, yeah. but the, actually, this isn't the, it even for Einstein. It's it's insane. It's yearly. Yeah. Citation. It's, uh, wow. Yeah, it's it's yearly citation. It's not cumulative, which brings in a, also another element that yeah, we're looking at individuals and how they are doing, but also we shouldn't forget that they are embedded in a system that is exponentially growing. We know science is exponentially growing. Yes. The number of papers is exponentially growing, number of authors is exponentially growing. So a lot is exponentially growing. So yes. all, all, all these things come together and but but it, but it also I mean just to say and it's it's exponentially growing in a heterogeneous way, right? So there's lots like if you think about it as a network, you can kind of say yeah. that there are communities that are yeah blooming and budding and coming out and, and a lot of stuff is happening. And then there are communities where not, there are other parts of the graph where nothing is happening. So it's yeah. even sort of, it's not just exponentially growing, but it's locally very different universes. Yeah, but definitely. And also um, there is inequalities, for example, are also growing. So um, yeah. we know that 80% uh, uh, of the citations are given to the top 1% uh, of 
papers, something like that. And and this um, this imbalance is growing over time. Yes. So 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 yeah. So it's it's definitely very heterogeneous. Yes. Anyway, I'm, no, I'm but, sidetracking. Your, your, <laughs> but your but what about many, many but, but what I wanted to say. So why why am I showing this example? That so there is a it's difficult to predict the number of citations of a living person of an active scientist because you have to predict also the impact of the things that he's gonna he or she is gonna write, right? So, mm -hmm. the, and when you think about this, then um, you know we have to. Uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'm making, a, I'm cutting a long story short, but we have to think about uh, all the, 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 the serendipity, right? So the, the things yes. that can happen in the yeah. future. Um, so, and this is how I started thinking about luck in creating careers. So, yeah. um, so I had this kind of plots. Um, you know, so this is what I call a career scientist and or, each of the of the dots in a plot is um, paper of a scientist, and the height uh, is the success of that paper captured by number of editions. And I thought that well, the challenge here is to take this kind of time series. There are time series after all, right? Yeah. And we have to untangle impact, productivity, and luck. All it can happen uh, even before um, a person yeah. uh, um, writes a paper. So um, and and so I started working. Well, we started working on these ideas on how to untangle um, this um, these things. And astrophysicists have been very good at doing that. Um, for example, with with spectra, right? They have. Yeah. Well, you can. You, we talk about luck, but it could be noise. You have, you have some signal uh, which is convoluted with noise, and you have to remove it. Um, and I really, back then, I was uh, trying to, to to do this exercise of looking at this time series and removing the noise um, out yes. of it. And and I said, I'm going to lift the curtain on the backstage uh, of, <laughs> of this. This was not easy. I'm talking. I'm saying. Uh, we went from A to B, the straight way was not straight. I remember yeah. I was struggling a lot. And I, so here is a screenshot of my folder in uh, uh, December 2013, about six months after I started. And I, was, I had plotted 125 items. And uh, this were at my attempts to untangle, to see if I could uh, untangle luck from careers in different ways. Um, yes. No, so, and, and, so and I mean, and let's <laughs> let's pause with this for a moment yeah. because I think it's so important <laughs> to to understand, especially if you're a young researcher looking at this, that to, and I I really think it's true that sometimes you do work where it just magically comes together very quickly. And it, or you do something where you go like, yeah, this is not even that great. And then people love it. Mm -hmm. But at other times you attack a problem and you know, you have a sense deep in your belly or somewhere, I don't know where mm -hmm. your sense is, mm -hmm. that you can, you, you, you can get through and you, you, that, there is, that there is something, right? Like you start, you get caught in this fog of uh, cloudiness and you're lost. Yeah. but you have a kind of sense, maybe you have a good advisor, maybe whatever, but, but that process is heavy and long. And, and, but, and, but in a weird way, like once the more experience you get, the more you also like it, right? There, that yes. there yeah, is something. There is something. And I, I, I got often the question, okay, how did you come up with this model? And with this model, how can you come up with this idea, right? Um, and and the fact is that there is not really a recipe for it. Um, um, it's hard to say what you need to do, um, but it's something that is definitely ha happening. And, and I think that it's good to have an intuition to follow the intuition. It's also important to hang in in a way, right? Yeah. Uh, 
and um, and this is what I was trying to remember. I had pretty tough days when I, I even lost a focus. Well, what is it that I'm that I'm doing here, right? Uh, what yep. is it that I want to do? Um, as I said, I was not thinking about lack immediately. I remember that back then my obsession was to said said in a physics way i wanted to rescale distributions on top of each other so if i wanted to do a renormalization because this is yeah. what i was taught to do it is, and i know that i knew that this was important but it was a bit like running around with a headless chicken <laughs> in, yeah. in a way okay why, why am i doing this it's part of the process, right? It's um, I, I, in, in some, sometimes it's unavoidable, I think. And, yeah, no. uh, and, um, and when I have, um, when there are students that ask me, I say, just don't lose motivation. They're trying to go on. And, and if you think you are stuck some way, start from a completely different point. Yeah, and, and, no. this is, it is, and this is what I did. I, so I, uh, we but have I, a screen plus that nobody has ever seen. So you won't see them anywhere yeah. because they are meaningless. <laughs> no, but, but uh, 100%. <laughs> like, uh, I, I'm not sure everyone works like this, but this is for sure also my process. And and I sometimes I have students where I have a sense that they're kind of disappointed with me. Like they're like, when is this guy going to say something brilliant? You know, because <laughs> because it's yeah. not always that brilliant, but kind of well, maybe we look at this or whatever. But I but I think in a way the skill that you develop is also a kind of it's almost like taste, right? Like you explore a big thing, and then like w what the skill in a way is to say like, oh, this is the right one. You mm -hmm. make all these plots and do all the ones, and 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 the skill is to I don't know if you agree with this, but that you can recognize like no, here now it's something. You know, yeah. we made a thousand plots. Yeah. But this one. Uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, no, I totally, I totally agree with you. Also, on the part where you know when you have the students expecting, <laughs> right, <Yeah. laughs> to, to say something brilliant, and say, uh, I don't, I, 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 I can't, I, I don't know, right? Yeah. But it's, but it's true, and and, and I, I often uh, tell myself or students uh, try try and then uh, plot things, even if they, you think don't make much sense. And then once you discover a diamond, right? You, 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 we, we realize that it's a diamond. I hope, I don't know how many I, I overlooked, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> but but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's part of, uh, of my process and I'm, I'm hearing that it's also part of your process. And, yes. and, and, this, and it was part of this process of this uh, paper. So where yeah. uh, at, a certain, at a certain point, yeah, I had the, aha, okay, this is how we need to do it. I, I started over, right, with all my uh, modeling thinking. And, um, and at the time I was reading about um, Galton and how he was thinking about um well he was talking about uh, her, uh he was thinking about genius and how genius can be hereditary am i pronouncing yes. correctly yeah and um at, and least, the way at least if it's wrong i can't tell okay well, <laughs> So, so uh, Galton wanted to say that genius runs in families, right? He was uh, he considered himself a genius. He belonged uh, to a successful family, so he wanted to show that uh, genius is hereditary. And he was not talking at the beginning about genius. He was talking about height of Englishmen, and he thought about the the queen counts of. Uh, um, it's called Queen Hans of Galton. It's a bit the, the thing that you have in uh, The Price is Right. So where you put the ball and yeah. uh, the ball can go left or right, left or right, uh, and then uh, it lands on a bin and you get the shape, a bell shape, right? Yeah. In the, Sometimes also called the Galton board. Is that a thing? Called, oh, Galton board. I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's the same. I, yeah. uh, I went for the, the very Latin sound word, so <laughs> Queen Cam. I was just happy there was something that I knew, so I immediately <laughs> had to say say something. Sure, but there was a problem with Gal with, with this way of thinking, right? So Galton was saying that if you have a man uh, as a father is um, tall, then 
the sun is either a bit short or a bit taller, but his side is much close, very close to the one of the father, right? So this is what happens when I put the ball. The problem is that if you add more generations, the um, base of this bell grows, right? So yes. if we have many generations, we should end up having, I don't know, men that are three meters or four meters tall and like 50 centimeters tall. And, and this doesn't yep. happen, right? And and the reason is, um, then, um, I mean, this was revisited and it's a long story of how Galton ended up in this, uh, ended up uh, thinking about this, um, but to reconcile the fact that we inherit something from our parents, but we, but also the extreme don't grow, so we still have, see the same distribution of height in a population, we need to have some random factor, and this is luck. So it's true that talent genius is inherited somehow from um, our parents but also there is this random factor that contributes to it and uh, basically creates a regression to the mean yeah. in the population using a bit of a scientific term here but uh, but, uh, but can i ask a clarifying question here sure which is i mean the way that i would think about it is that luck is randomness that goes in the right direction for you basically is that correct or is or is there is it something different in the way that you use it um yeah i think i use it in a bit of a different way luck can go in both ways can go in the right direction on say a paper a given paper uh, right meaning in a favorable direction yes it could be the other way around for the next paper yeah. and uh, and and it's the same for all the people so sometimes we have a lucky draw right sometimes yep. we, we win at the, lo the lottery uh, sometimes we don't so luck yeah. is the same uh, what what changes is, is uh well talent or we can call it skill yeah. it's something that in, is intrinsic to the individual but, but so so the, so it's the randomness still then like it's the same yeah. as the randomness? Yes. Yeah, lack and randomness. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same. Uh, what I think it's important. So we use the word luck because luck is the same for the individuals. Randomness might not be the same if you think about a different kind of noise, right? Yes, <laughs> but luck should, um, So the, we effect, effectively as humans, we have all the same chances to win at the um, uh, Russian roulette. So. This is How do you win at the <laughs> Russian roulette? But, Maybe just to I mean, yeah, oh, we, 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 we all have the same the same chances, right? Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so, so then this is where I said, okay, we need to think of impact uh, or, or success uh, in two ways. Um, it's a combination of luck and something which is intrinsic to the individual. And, and this is where uh, we started decomposing um, uh, impact. We call it C as uh, randomness, which we call P and uh, individual, um, uh, an individual ability, let's say, which we call Q. Um, so this is a multiplication and why? Um, because we were dealing with log normals distributions when we were working on this data. And we know that log normals are a signature of multiplicative processes. This was the, yes. the idea of it. And, but this is amazing. Uh, I mean, it was awesome to, uh, to work with, um, with a multiplication. And when you have log normal, because then when you go onto the logarithmic space, you get uh, normal distributions and not log normal anymore. Yep. And, and, uh, and, and normal distributions have a lot of awesome properties that you can use. And it's the one which is at the core of the paper. Finally, we arrive at the paper, uh, the APJ uh, data science um, paper, because um, um, when uh, you move into the logarith logarithmic space, you get log of C, equal log of P plus log of Q. So you have the sum of two normal distributions that gives you a normal distribution. Yep. And here we started using uh, something which is called classic test theory, 
uh, also true score theory. It's pretty popular in uh, psychometric and psychology. So mm -hmm. psychologists know a lot of this, yeah. and um, and use it to um, well. They, they started using to uh, analyze the uh, results of people taking tests, but we can use it also in a career setting. Um, so let me jump uh, with onto another. Uh, so I think this is a bit too much. Uh, so I just want to say that, so in this paper, and this APJ data science paper, success and luck in creative careers, we decided to focus on luck. The paper where we decided to focus on skill and ability. So on the Q part is another paper that we published in 2016. Yes. But I know that you were not lazy to read that paper, so you read it. So mm -hmm. I will go to the, on the, to the paper that, <laughs> that uh, um, yeah, but, that was but, enough, but, I, but I also think that the luck part is incredibly interesting, right? Because it's, mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, for everyone who's doing well, I think it's important to understand that a, a big component of that very likely is luck and you shouldn't yeah. pat yourself too much on the, I, I know that at least, you know, that, that, I mean, probably it's also, um, all kinds of other things but i think it's just important to to recognize that success is in 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 large part driven by luck also right and yeah. and that and that yeah. it's, you shouldn't think that you are the sole reason for your, your success definitely and, and this is something that actually many people uh didn't accept or still don't accept when I talk about success as a convolution of luck and uh, talent because many people think okay I'm a self-made man or self-made woman right so talent is really the important part and it's not yes. luck especially if it's the same if we say that luck is the same for all individuals so um, but yeah but luck is there it's unavoidable uh, it's measurable and um, at least according to to, to this uh, framework and what we wanted to do is understanding how much how much luck is involved in different um, endeavors basically uh, if you talk with um, chess players they think there is no luck involved and we think there is no luck involved right there is no yeah. everything is the terminus, uh, right? Uh, yes. There. If you go gambling, uh, it's there is basically no. It, it's all luck, right? There is no, no no skill there. Although people think that they are um, talented for gambling, yeah. but it's it's really um, just luck. Where are all the other things? Where are ah, I have it here? Where is science? Where is music? Where is movie making? Or is book writing? How much of the success of this thing is luck and talent, right? Yes. They are closer to chess or they're closer to um, to gambling. This is where what we wanted to do, what we wanted to measure, um, basically, given the framework that I talked about. So we could export the way we uh, untangle success into skill and luck into other realms and yeah. compare and compare. Luck. Just by the, just to interject, that is a brilliant idea. That Thank once you. <laughs> you have a framework, basically yeah. use it to to study the size, the the importance of luck in in a range of things that people can do. Yes, yeah, yeah, amazing. I I, 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 I also uh, fell in love with this idea. I thought it's wow. Let's let's see how much right how. how how really good our scientists are not being lucky because we believe that we are not lucky, right? We are good in respect to, you know, musicians. Yeah. And I, don't, I will not spoil the results. I just wanted to say how we do it. So it's the last tiny bit of technical, but just, you know, because you have to buy this. So it's yeah, important. Yeah, yeah. And then I will say the result. Um, okay, uh, just saying that there is a lot of, so I think 90% of the work to, to tackle this question that I just said, how much luck is involved in different disciplines is in the data um, uh, uh, collection. And, and this was done by Milan, uh, who is the first author on this paper, who was a PhD student with me at, um, at CEU. And he really like uh, did a lot of hard work in collecting the data sets. I won't say much because it's a bit boring, but yeah, there are huge data sets and a lot of work and a lot of curating. But to, maybe, but to maybe there's the one question. thing, 
maybe there's one thing we can talk about in this, which is somehow one of the things that we we need to do in this business when we look at data that we didn't collect for the purposes is to choose a proxy, right? You choose yeah. a proxy of success, which could be a number of stars on Goodreads or, or whatever. And how, like, how do you think about that? Because you have to do that a lot in the success yeah. um, business and and sometimes it's very clear that it's a good proxy sometimes it's less so um mm -hmm. and 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 so in addition to the kind of cleaning yeah i mean and i can say you know hoping that no editors uh uh are listening to this right that that in a way you're kind of sometimes you're like i have a great data set i showed it now i want to show it more broadly And then you kind of go, could this work? Could this be a thing? Mm -hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? And, and so yeah. some of them, it's very clear. Some of them, you kind of, you have to work a little harder to believe that it's a good proxy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so first of all, uh, let's go to the, to, the, to, to the part that I didn't say. So the way we think about success is a um, um, collective phenomenon, right? So it's, it's, um, So there is this difference between talent and success. So talent belongs to the individual, but we have we have no ways of measuring it. Um, or I mean, we, we can measure it in sports where we can time how fast you are and that is objective, but we cannot do it in music, right? Yes. Uh, and then we, we use the, the other measure, which is success, uh, which we think is talent, but it's not because it's somehow, it, it's, it, it reflects what the society thinks about you. Yes. And it's prone to all possible sort of, inf uh, of effects like social influence and biases. So it's, it's a lot. But in, the important part is that it's collected. There are many people contributing to that yes. number. So we settled to work on data on music, movies, uh, well, science and books, because um, uh, these are the creative domains that have been studied um, widely in, uh, in social psychology. So we could build on that and you know they are defined as creative domains. So we could also compare results with other yep. results. Um, and in these databases that, um, that we used, we could identify a measure that is collective, that is due to the accumulation of, um, of opinions, right? Um, yeah. By different people. It could be by um, just people that watch movies like IMDb, you look at the, the reviews, number of reviews and average review, or it could be uh, still a success measure, but by, um, specific uh, group of people like experts um, that give a, um, a, a critic um, yeah. review. And that would be, for example, the case if you use Metacritic, Metacritic scores or rot Rotten Tomatoes scores, um, right. which uh, we also used, but it was, it didn't, um, th those analysis didn't end up in the um, main paper. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the way we, we we looked at success measures, right? So differentiating and then finding something which is collective. I don't know if I answered your- um, I think you did, I think you did to some degree, but but then you raised another thing that I was thinking about that, that mm -hmm. wasn't completely clear. So so you made this point about Galt and, and this kind of randomness to ensure that the, the uh, Gaussian distribution doesn't uh, get infinitely wide. Yeah. But I guess one thing that would be helpful to clarify mm -hmm. uh, is when you have this collective phenomenon of success, you exactly find power laws that that what you had there. So, so there is there is this additional uh, component of, uh, you know, preferential attachment or preferential attention given to the those things. So maybe just spend a couple of minutes talking about. Yeah. This, the yeah. connection between these uh, distributions that you this, find and then this this um, broad distributions of success. I think that could be. Yeah, it's, uh, it's important. Yeah. So, but I, I will go on to a hairy topic because we actually don't find power law distributions, but we find log normal distributions. Okay, so those are the log normals. 
yeah, and I don't want to get here into the whole fight about, you know, like, why not? Why not? Uh, we know. Should I try and call in uh, Laszlo and uh, Aaron Fassett? Uh, and then, yeah, and then they, yeah, they discuss, but uh, yeah. we, we also know that in finite data sets, and these are finite data sets, it's very hard to reliably distinguish between log normals and power laws. So sure. there are also statistical reasons for that. But uh, if we go with um, uh, out of the box to statistic tools and we look at the distributions of success here, log normals are better fits than power laws. Yes, and but they're very normals, broad anyway, right? Like they're very broad. They're very broad still. Um, and they're broad because we have these multiplicative factors uh, behind it. But once you go into the logarithmic space, they are very well behaved. And this is where we reconcile with Galton, right? Galton was thinking about additive processes to, for the regression to the mean and so on. Yep. We, we have something here that amplifies um, uh, success, but still the like, log normals are well behaved distribution with a well-defined yep. uh, variance and so on. So, um, uh, uh, so, so we are. We shouldn't think about preferential attachment here and so on as things that explode from a statistical point of view. Everything gets well, but well still, but still, isn't it? Isn't it like a super important part of the story that not only is it about luck to some degree, but yeah. also that this luck has this evil multiplicative effect in the mm -hmm. real world like so it's fine but you're not living in a logarithmic world like you and yeah. i have to live <laughs> you know, in an exponential world right? exactly so <laughs> yeah. so so because i i think that, that you can't overstate you know when whenever you think about inequality and whenever you think about all and it ties into a lot of the deep work that you're doing i think this is so important in the work that yeah. you're doing is that we live in this world where it's just aggregating right and yeah. and and it's aggregating not in an additive way but in this, this kind of um so 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 your luck really um somehow is is um yeah it's it it, it grows it, it has impact in this non-intuitive way and i think that's so important to to draw out and yeah. and, and um so so just highlighting that i guess <laughs> Yeah, 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 but you're definitely right. So the consequences that we experience that, that arise from luck are um, exponential, are, yeah, as I say, yeah. we, we, we don't live in an additive world, right? Yeah. Uh, and um, but this is why we, we see things like, you know, the, the, uh, the richest person in the world is a uh, million times richer than the poorest, right? Yeah. Uh, al although probably the, the motivations, um, uh, this is the difficult, <laughs> sorry, let me <laughs> let's make another example. The, the, uh, the, the most cited scientist uh, in the world has uh, probably a uh, hundred thousand citations more than the um, least cited scientist uh, in the world. But the skill and the ability is not hundred thousand more. We know that, uh, that um, um, intelligence scores or skill and so on is also very uh, 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 is distributed as a normal um, distribution. Uh, yes. It's the effects that we see that become um, um, very large, very very big. Uh, but yeah. but I just I just want to flag up because I feel like someone should be going around the internet shouting and yelling this every day, <laughs> right? That this in your work, this fi this finding that number one that when you talk to people that are successful, they don't believe that luck plays a role. Mm -hmm. And secondly, that this kind of <clears throat> multiplicative effect of the luck means that if there's a small bias, let's say between men and women, just to pick a mm -hmm. random example, even if it's not very unfair, even if it's just a little bit unfair nudging you in that direction, what your work is showing is that that can amplify in very strong ways. So, so you take people that don't even believe, like most people don't even believe in luck in the first place. And then this other effect taken together 
it really shows how careful we should be with this. Yeah, that's um, that's that's right. And this is what I think this research uh, has can have important ethical implications on how we evaluate people, or even how just we perceive um, the work of people. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm gonna I'd like I. This was not clear to me. Like I understand, mm -hmm. you know, that I'm explaining your own work to you. Uh, but it's because I'm realizing it for the first yeah. time and yeah. it's blowing my mind. Uh, I mean, I, yeah, maybe, or if like fully, at least I'm grasping it fully for the first time. And, and, um, and I just think it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's incredibly kind of um, once you internalize this, it's yeah. crazy. It's, it's crazy. And, you know, I don't know exactly what, what one can do. We cannot do, we cannot change how people react to things, right? We cannot say people, you shouldn't give a review to this movie because, you know, preferential attachment or whatever, lack, you're amplifying. Yeah, no. <laughs> you, know? so you cannot do that. Um, or, uh, so it, we cannot alter the perception of people. We perceive like one person, this uh, 100,000 citations, much uh, as, as if that person is much better, whatever good is better than another scientist. We know that it's not like that. So what can we do? I think my my two cents are, okay, if we have to measure these things and we have, if we have to provide indicators, let's do it in the logarithmic space. Let's not say one person is 100,000 times better. Let's say it's four times better, right? So, um, so I mean, it's, 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 if you want, it's a, um, it's a dry thing, but since we use measures, indicators, and, and we visualize this data and so on, let's do it in a way that we really um, go back to the mechanism. So we see there is lack, there's a multiplicative effect. Let's take it out of the equation and let's take it out by using what well, logarithms in this case. Um, and it's important if we are evaluating music, science and so on, uh, that, um, that we, we use these this measures. Um, but I think it's also something we need to internalize, internalize it well. So perhaps we yep. should have um, study of success in all curricula and, <laughs> and re remind people that the, things work like this. Yeah. No, absolutely, but <laughs> but I mean, but I think you know, like, it is not a perfect cure. But I think being aware that we are, you know, beings full of biases helps us mitigate some of those biases. And mm -hmm. and I was talking before about you know you should be aware of the effect of luck. And I I now I kind of from kind of having this uh, talk with you, I'm becoming you know aware that that's even more than I thought, right? Okay. That, that okay. do you know what I mean? That that it's, uh, it's um like when someone goes well for you, you should really think like I'm so lucky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rather than, I'm so brilliant. And it's not that <laughs> I necessarily think that, but I think it's like that's that's like the life life lesson, right? Is uh, is yeah. um yeah, I, I, it depends on the person. A person should think, yeah, how lucky uh, I am. There are people that so that, that yeah. there are people that think, oh, I have been lucky. You should think, oh, how talented I am, because it's really a combination uh, of two. So yeah, depending on with whom you speak, but we shouldn't forget that if there is a difference, this is most probably tiny, and it's amplified by uh, yeah, lack of things that are not. Yes that are not part of us, like gender, right? So, and you know that I'm but, an advocate of that. But, this is also a perfect point to move forward with the paper idea. Yeah, because yeah. And, yes, we are running out of time too. Right? Know, but, it's but, also, it's a, but it also works because you're kind of, now we're gonna say how big a role is played by luck in across these yeah. things, right? Yeah, so just wanted to say that, how, how do we have to think about this? We have to think about this as, so success, which we measure, um, it's citations of a paper, it's the number of reviews of a movie. It's the sum of two normal distributions. Well, they are log normal if we talk about number of reviews. If we move in the log space, we have a normal 
distributions. And these are here, right? So this is yep. like, uh, this is the number uh, of reviews. Uh, okay, this stopped working. I'm seeing uh, coming, uh, coming through. Okay, it's coming. Taking, uh, taking some time. Yeah, I don't know why it's lagging, but okay, the, 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 it's, it's working finally. Okay, um, this is uh, the distribution of the number of reviews. This yep. is the distribution of talent, and this is the distribution of luck. So here they are called observed value, true value, random error, because these are the names that we use in classical uh, test theory. So this is yeah, okay. the theory um, that um, psychometrician uh, use. Um, but this is a very well behaved example that I show you on the right, on, on the left. On the right, you have uh, example number one and example number two here. Mm -hmm. And these are opposite, right? In, in the first example, um, you see that the distribution of talent is very broad and luck plays a very tiny role is that red distribution yep. there. In example two, the two roles are swapped. Um, luck plays a big role, it has a high variance and talent is very highly picked. So meaning in example number two, all individuals are more or less equal in terms of talent and all the differences in outcomes are due to luck. Right, mm -hmm. and the first example is the other way. So yep. it's uh, um, people are very diverse, and luck plays a little role. So we use this theory to measure basically the um, uh, differences in variance, in fluctuations of luck, given the distribution of talent in that field. So this is how we can compare the luck component in different fields by yeah, looking at the mutual um, uh, 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 variance. So the formula is simply uh, sigma, uh, uh, this is not working well, so it's sigma of P, this is the variance of uh, my luck component. Uh, <laughs> Small technical issues is not working. So yeah, it's, but I guess, well, the, the intuition this, though is pretty clear, right? That you can, depending mm -hmm. on like the the situations where one is much more broad than the other, have vastly different implications. Yeah. That that we we have normal distributions uh, at all times, but um, if it's if it's skill that's broad and luck that's narrow, then luck. Is, is unimportant and but you can have other situations where skill doesn't matter and it's all luck exactly so example number one here would be chess and example number two would be gambling and you yeah. have everything in between and this is what we want to measure right yeah. and we have we have now a, a framework to measure it yes and this is what I'm going to show you. So we did this for different fields. We did, we did it for movies, we did it for music, we did it for science, and for each category, subcategory, this one. So in movies, you can look at movie producers, yes, uh, uh, play writers, movie directors, and so on. And, um, and uh, or also we can do it within science. And as I said at the beginning, I loved this idea. I fell in love with the idea uh, of doing this. Once I saw the results, I didn't really fall in love with the results <laughs> because, because in a way they were disappointing. Um, you are seeing uh, the differences um, amplified because we wanted to show, um, we wanted people to read the numbers. But if you look at this, yeah, they're very luck, nice. Yeah, luck, they are very close. Luck is more or less 50% of um, counts. The fluctuations in luck count for 50% of the fluctuations in success, which is a result per se. So we can say that more or less 50% of what we do is of the success of a given item is luck, right? Yep. 50% is talent, um, but all fields, um, music, uh, movies, or uh, science, they are very similar to each other. There are mm -hmm. really, really tiny differences. Um, yeah, and uh, I don't know how uh, people um, uh, uh, digest this, but it seems that 
success in science. We are talking about success, I remind you, so it's, we're talking about citations uh, when we talk about success in science. It's not it's, um, as much luck driven as success in classical music or in, uh, in jazz music. But so, I, but so yeah. I mean, when you see this in a way, like you, you would, then you would be, you would be to say, well, it, it could be that luck is the same, but it could also be that is the model then the right model? Like, can you find examples um, where luck actually does play? Like, if you can, you take some gamblers, see see what their outcome is, or or um, like, how would you c kind of attack? that response yeah um yeah it's it's something that sh one should definitely uh do we we didn't do it so you know this is part, no, no, part but I mean, of... we're just we're talking about the paper and yeah, it's not so... trying to kind of uh, attack it or anything yeah. i'm just curious yeah so one way to uh, i think to step into um the so is this a good model to to capture um luck for example so of course it's a framework and we are um, assuming that this framework is something has happened uh, yeah. it's, <laughs> so you know, you know now all my um apps <laughs> Um, so um, um, what we did was validating the framework so that this framework, that this is a good way of modeling success. And yeah. this is how um, we accepted the fact that it's also a good way to, um, to measure luck because um, luck is a, a fundamental ingredient of the model that we use. So if yes. you use this model to predict success works well, so it must, it, it, so it, then this means that um, the components of the model are correct, so luck is there. And then we, we use it to, to measure. But, but I agree with you, um, one could, for example, get data about gamblers or get data uh, about chess and, and see if um, our intuition um, is um, uh, correct. Right, so we yeah. should see no luck in uh, in uh, chess, and we should see total, total luck in gambling. We didn't do it. This is um, no, no. Uh, but 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 I mean, but I, right. I, I but I saw the analysis of the other factor, right? And the and the and and um, and I agree that it's a great model for understanding, you know, like the, the, this Q matrix that you discuss in another paper, which has this yeah. remarkable. Mm -hmm. uh, property that it actually factors out and it, there's so much yeah. construct so so i think that it is a valuable model for sure but mm -hmm. it's just i mean it's but it's kind of like either it doesn't do a, as good a job of catch capturing luck or this is like the most is super profound right yeah. that luck is is just very constant across mm -hmm. all these human endeavors um yeah. so I would go for the second option that you <laughs> that you went yeah, because yeah, we yeah. did we did all the work of validating the model in this data. You mentioned the factorization of the Q matrix. This this holds for this data too. So yeah. so if the model works well in, in science, it works. Uh, if you buy that, it's, it it works as well in here in, in this different data. So. so so I do believe that, um, that this is a valid way of capturing luck, and the results shows that it, it yeah, it's basically um, um, it has the very similar roles in different uh, areas, and and at the end of the day, we're all humans, right? We some of us decide to have creative careers in music. Some of us in a parallel world, instead of music, go into, into science. But we, in a way, we all work the same way. So, and also society works in the same way. So why shouldn't uh, luck, why should luck be very different in these creative fields? Yes. I consider gambling not a creative field and also chess in a way is, is, uh, is different, yeah. right? It has more to do with the ability of computing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, but, but the 
Roberta, this is so exciting and thank you for taking yeah. the time to explain it. Uh, we, sure. we have to wrap up soon because yeah. we're well beyond the hour, but I wanted, I wanted to ask one more question and I want yeah. you to have lots of time to answer. Like, it's not like yeah. it's a podcast. We can go on for three hours if we want to. Yes, definitely. So, so but, but I'm just kind of saying, uh, you know, I'm a terrible uh, podcast uh, host as, uh, because I'm, I'm, I'm still practicing, but, but super fascinating um, conversation but I want to ask one question which is you know so, so that stuck in my mind since you mentioned Galton and so so Galton yeah. wanted to understand how genius is inherited yeah but we know in science that genius is inherited not in families but from advisor to student and what yeah. I mean by that is something very concrete because of course it isn't for real, but but we you do be, but you do know that um, Nobel Prize winners, right, uh, have like an incredibly much higher chance of, um, or if you're a scientist and and your advisor was a Nobel Prize winner, then your odds of winning the Nobel Prize are much greater, and and yeah. we can understand all kinds of mechanisms for this, right? Like visibility, you inherit a, a bunch of this, but it's still somehow. It fascinates me because I think some of it is also, you mentioned your advisor, you've learned a lot <clears throat> from Vito Latora. And like you said, you've learned a lot from Laszlo. And part of it is learning to love the process. Part of it is connections, all of this. But I just want you to maybe think a little bit or tell me what are your thoughts on this, this kind of process? And in a way, it's also what we talked about in our paper mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. of inheriting talent how does yeah. that fit into all this yeah okay so i think that in science we inherit talent we we are nurtured right by our mentors yeah. i also think that we inherit success though uh, uh and um so it's not that we inherit only one of the two things we also inherit the visibility so things that a copy of us in, a weird, in another universe uh, with a different mentor wouldn't have got, right? Yes. So, so I think that this is something very hard to tackle with the data. So it's hard to say, okay, is this person successful because it's, it's started with that person and inherited, was nurtured, or for other reasons, it's something um, really hard. Although we have worked on... on, on on chaperoning, right, people. Yeah. Uh, but I think there we we what we we studied is one aspect of the whole of, of all the components that a person is made of, right? So there yeah. we studied um, well what we what a senior uh, scientist it could be a mentor transfers to um, um, how did we call it. Uh, well, a student, right, a mentee, um, in terms of publishing in a given journal. So this is the aspect that we captured there, which is important, it's fundamental, right? Because we know yeah. that uh, if you manage to, if you learn to publish in nature, is you're gonna have a very good life as a, as a scientist, right? Um, so uh, we shouldn't, uh, uh, yeah, hide that. Um, but there is much more. Uh, um, than disability and 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 I think it's a hard problem to tackle because we it's a combination of things um, that are not easy to to um, to untangle to, to 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 separate. So whether we inherit just talent or we also inherit visibility, what what we inherit more, right? Yeah, and yeah. and but I think it's a beautiful kind of thing that you inherit both the talent and the success, right? Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. there's some of both. Mm -hmm. You could easily imagine that you could find examples of mentors where you inherit zero talent because they're too busy to ever talk to their mentees or they're just horrible people. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. I've heard stories. Uh, yeah. Not that, it, you know, so, so, so you can imagine <laughs> We're that. We're thinking about the same story probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like I had many, many stories. I was more yeah. trying to say that I've I've always had amazing uh, mentors. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. not like a I'm speaking from experience, but it's just that we we know this 
Um, and you could also imagine the, the, the complete opposite, that you have someone who is the most fantastic mentor, but they're one of the people that just have been on the wrong end of the luck, uh, yeah. <laughs> luck <laughs> multiplication. Uh, yeah. and, and, um, and there is hope for both, right? In, yeah, yeah, in but, both but, it's just to say, but it's just to say that your analysis in a way gets even harder because you can probably inherit both and, and it depends very much on the, on the mentor and their personality and so on. And, mm -hmm. and it's also, you can also measure success in many other different ways, like how happy are you in science and as a scientist? And, and so, so yeah, it's a super fascinating problem set. And, and yeah. yeah, and I love, love your work on it. <laughs> I, um, I love the fact that this has some implications in the things that we do uh, as scientists, right? If you want, I... I, I internal I inter internalize a lot of this, and I, I do apply it in um, my daily life. For example, when I read a paper, when I need to hire the next um, student or postdoc, and so on, try to to adjust my perceptions uh, based on this science. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Absolutely. And I think, like, as you heard me say when I was kind of realizing it along the way, I think it is really important. And and I think, uh, you know, because luck is so so um, prevalent in our in in all our endeavors, this is really mm -hmm. something to to keep in mind that that mm -hmm. um, that that as as we tr sort of work to escape you know, like this incredibly self-centered way that we have of seeing the world that's full of so many biases and, and trying to be better human beings. This is another thing that's that's so important. And it's, it's so cool that it's it's being quantified and and, uh, <laughs> and uh, decomposed and figured out uh, by someone like you, Roberta. So yeah. thank you so much for hanging out and talking. Did thank we you. cover everything? Is there something? Yeah. Else? You know, it's you ask for the juicy comments, but I think this is uh, this is the better note to to finish. So. We have to have an episode <laughs> two with you at some point, anyway. So yeah, we'll say, exactly. We'll, we'll, we'll have talk that. about the review process another time. We'll be just we only review our stories. You just, yes. You have like your whole list of gripes when yeah. you're like, yes, and in this paper, <laughs> reviewer two. You know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> that is that sounds more like psychotherapy for scientists, but it's also good. good I would fun. watch that podcast. I would say, <laughs> yeah. you know, when you yeah. just where you just go through paper by paper, mm -hmm. reviewer by reviewer, and and mention the uh, unfairness. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. You know, that's definitely. Yeah. We'll start that up um, for the second season. <laughs> for the second season, yes, absolutely. Okay. Right, thank, thank you. So you. This was fun. Ciao. It was really fun. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Hi hi. Bye.